to Santa Clara and facing a 49ers team that is extremely dangerous at home. Ryan Romani, Braylon Edwards, our number two of the program. It is a pleasure to be joined in studio, in studio by a man who represents Michigan's 10th Congressional District, Representative John James. How you doing, sir? Man, I'm so glad to be here. Go Lions. This has been the best year of football in my entire life. The uh, Oakland Macomb Youth Football League, my kids, the freshman team, won the Super Bowl. Okay. Uh, Army beat Navy. Let's uh, three go. out of the past five years. <laughs> uh, Michigan won the Natty. There you go. And now the Lions are, are, are going to win the NFC Championship and win the Super Bowl. It's, just, it's, it's amazing. It's great. The energy is amazing. I love it. It's I been January it. fly by. <laughs> That's just right. Totally. Like 100%. Totally. What snow? The, 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 there's no <laughs> doubt about it. The, now, now, John, yeah. talk to me about your football background because I know you're a huge fan. I mean, you went to one of the biggest football high schools in, in the state of Michigan and Brother Rice. Yeah, I, uh, I had the, uh, the distinct honor and pleasure of being a Brother Rice warrior. Uh, graduated in 99 um, and uh, played for the legendary Al Fracasa. Mark Goble. Uh, yeah, I'll say it. Mark Goble's a good friend. Uh, graduated go. in 2000, went to Michigan State. Won't hold that against him. But anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> aside from being a Brother Rice warrior, I, I, I remember growing up, the Lions, get this, the Lions won the last playoff game when I was 10 years old. And the Lions just won their next playoff game this year when my oldest son is 10 years old. So, I mean, that's absolutely incredible. Let's, let's make sure, let's hope that they don't wait another 32 years to win their next playoff game. But I think Dan Campbell has these boys rolling. One playoff win in, in, in 66 years, and then all of a sudden two in eight days. <laughs> so, hey, we'll take it. We'll take it. What do you, we were just talking about leadership, John, and Dan Campbell and, and what he has been able to do in this organization. Dan Campbell, the leadership, the culture that he has brought to the Detroit Lions, to Allen Park, um, what do you think has helped him achieve something that no other coach has been able to do in Detroit? Look, one word, believe. Dan Campbell is Detroit's Ted Lasso. Look at the parallel. Mm, great. Look, look, look. Oh, look. John, you're something. Oh, look, oh, 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 look, oh, look, oh. Ted Lasso. Oh, great I'm not show. done yet. I'm not done yet. A team that's always the butt of a joke. A new, strong female owner who takes the team over from family members and makes an unconventional pick for head coach. That coach has an interesting first interview, right? And press conference. And then what? Name calling. Ted Wanker. Dan Campbell, meathead, right? Meathead, yeah. and, and, and despite that, losing season the first season, still believes better season next season, and now on the brink of winning it all through relentless positive attitude, straight talk, honesty, winning people's respect, mm. and still to this day, giving homage to the people who came before the city of Detroit and, and, and getting everybody to believe. And the thing that he said that really stirred my heart is a message. The reason we're America's team is because he's coming with a message that America needs to hear. Do you know what you're capable of? That's what he said. That's not just a message for the Lions for Detroit. That's a message that America needs to hear. That's why they Lions the Americans team, America's team, and that's why we're going to win it all this year. I love that. Sign me up. I'm, 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 I am voting for anything you do. <laughs> Sign me the hell up, uh, John James. I haven't seen you in a while, man. Good to yeah. see you. Damn, damn, good to see you. The word we're looking for is transparency. Yes. How often do we see a, a head coach or a CEO or insert person of that have president? They're not transparent. They do things in the shadows. They say one thing and then another thing is true. Right. They say they tell a player one thing, then the player is gone. They tell the people one thing and then the people get to see something else. It's transparent. When you're transparent, you know what that leads to, which is the biggest thing that this franchise has from Sheila to Brad to Dan to the players is trust. That's when right. you're transparent, the trust follows. And I think that's what you're saying with the Detroit Lions this year. That's and right. Dan, well, not this year. He told us three years. That's right. He told us three years, and here we are in the third right. year. Detroit Lions are in NFC Championship. Transparency bleeds trust. That's right. John, how do how do the Lions win this game? What do they have to do to go to San Francisco and win this game? Look, I, I, I'm going to try to boil it down three things. Uh, three things. One on offense. I think that, that the two things, first two, is, is between the tackles. It's in the trenches, yeah. just the way Dan Campbell likes it. Uh, I think the matchup between Nick Bosa, 
who's actually resting his shoulder right now, and Panay Sewell, left, uh, left end and, uh, and right tackle, uh, is going to be a, a big deal. Uh, protecting the quarterbacks, giving them time, because there's a lot of talent uh, on that roster between uh, McCaffrey and, and Ayuk and, uh, and, uh, and Kittle. Jenny's if if Brock Purdy is given time, he will pick us apart, and we need to stop the big play. And so if we can get pressure on Brock Purdy, uh, that's how we'll be successful. And conversely, on defense, Getting pressure uh, or uh, protecting uh, Goff. Uh, uh, Jared Goff is going to be key as well. Um, and then the X factor is how well we travel. Um, the Lions are uh, uh, the the, uh, the 49ers, excuse me, um, have lost uh, uh, three of their five at home, and the Lions actually beat. Kansas City and Dallas. Yes, the Lions beat Dallas. I agree. Uh, I agree. And, we and, all agree I, on I agree. that, right? And, and so they, they are a road team. We travel well, and we, we recognize uh, the first half of a game, there was many Honolulu Blue as there was Creamsicle cream Orange. Delta yeah. is putting an additional flight and increasing the size of the airplane going to San Francisco. It'll be interesting, that X factor, to see um, how the Lions travel. So, again, protecting the quarterbacks. Uh, and uh, that X factor, how well lines travel. I love that. Got to tell Lauren, I said, what up next time you talk to him? Got to tell myself, what's up? Talking about this game, one of the big things in this game on the defense side of the San Francisco 49ers is that linebacker core. Greenlaw and Fred Warner might be the best tandem in the league. One of the things the Lions do well is they get on the perimeter, whether it's Jameer Gibbs, whether it's Amar Ross St. Brown, whether it's quick screens of Sam Laporta. That's going to be an interesting facet in that game. How do you think Ben Johnson will handle those linebackers that are elite of the elite? Well, uh, I think we saw a good amount of experience uh, or a good amount of examples. Uh, Jared Goff picking apart the center of the field. I don't think that San Francisco is going to uh, make those same mistakes. But also what we need to look at is their run defense. Mm. The Lions have the number two run defense and San Francisco number two. So if we can actually move the ball on the ground, San Francisco actually gave up over 100 yards to Green Bay. And so part of the way you can soften up that linebacker course, get them to scoot up in, right? Yeah. You get them to scoot up in, now you can begin picking apart. This is where we get back to how much time Jared Goff is being given. And so when you look at some of the injuries, I'm really looking at Frank Ragnow. Mm. I'm really looking at Panay Sewell. I'm really looking at the health of our office. And like I, like I said, the key is between the tackles. If we can give them a little bit of protection, yeah. maybe even double team Nick Bosa, um, who's going to be covering down elsewhere on that line? Because somebody's going to be open. So we're going to need to black, uh, block well in the backfield give that time and if we can establish a run game suck those linebackers up Pause. we should have plenty of space out on the perimeters and maybe even in the middle of the field for your tight end uh um uh, Sam Laporta. Sam Laporta. Yeah. He's, uh, I mean, amazing. Incredible. But also for and the now new you guy, Zach, Zach Ertz. Too. Right. Zach Ertz. You have a three-time Pro Bowler and a Super Bowl champion now playing with our our quarterback who's played in the Super Bowl. I, I think uh, in in uh, uh, yeah, I think I think we have a great opportunity there. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Bray. And and yeah. I wanted to point you talk about that run game if I could. Yep. Uh, can I put this up? Uh, let's put up the Lions run defense if if I could. Um, the Lions run defense, and I didn't realize until we did a little digging on this, the Lions rush defense has not allowed a 70-yard rusher all season long. No one running back has rushed for over 70 yards the entire season. Christian McCaffrey has done it 12 times. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah. Lions run defense against Christian McCaffrey. Everybody's going to look at Debo Samuel, but Christian McCaffrey over there, my goodness, if you could stop this guy and make you one-dimensional, um, the Lions are going to win this game. I, I totally agree. Like I said, the key is between the tackles. Yep. How well you're protecting Jared Goff and, uh, and how well you're getting at uh, McCaffrey, stopping McCaffrey and uh, getting after uh, Brock Purdy. Yeah, I agree 100%. One of the things that has been the Lions' catalyst so far in the playoffs is physicality. Like when they played against the Rams, I mean, they knocked Puka out a couple times. They, right. knocked, they tried to take Jerry, uh, excuse me, Matt Stafford's head completely off. They were physical in that game, and they were physical last week. Do you agree with this sentiment? Remember when – I talked about this a couple times. Remember when the, 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 the Indianapolis Colts, Peyton Manning, mm -hmm. Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison, Dallas Clark, yeah, Edger and James, they were the thing in the NBA, I mean, NFL, as it relates to the skill position, putting up the numbers, putting up the yards. But every time they played the Patriots, mm -hmm. the Patriots played two men. They beat them up at the line of scrimmage. They beat them up in the run game. When you're physical with those teams, those guys didn't want to play against the Patriots. I think that's the kind of game that you're going to have to play against this. They're not a finesse offense, 
but they're a high power offense that hasn't had a team come and say we're more physical than you. That's right. And, and you know what they used to call this division? I mean, back in the Central, they used to call it the what? Black and blue division. Black and yeah. blue. We played the Packers. We played the, the Bears. Bears. We played the Vikings. The Bucks. We, we, we hit. We played the Bucks. the Bucks. We play physical football here in Detroit. And so I think that type of physical football, running the ball, establishing the run, playing tough, hard-nosed defense, that's the type Me of thing hit. that travels. <laughs> right, exactly. There you go. And they're going to come up and smash you right in the mouth. And, and so I'm not quite sure. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if they play that kind of uh, uh, um, game uh, out there in San Francisco, out there in California on the coast. We'll see if they can yeah. play Detroit football out there. John, let me ask you because we we believe that the Lions are America's team. That's I think right. you believe the Lions are America's team. I don't know if you saw the cover of the New York Post yesterday or two days ago. It had the real America's That's team right. on yeah. there, That's the right. Lions. When you're in Washington uh, with other lawmakers and stuff, how exciting is it to have uh, your own football team be good? Do, do, do people kind of treat you a little differently when your football team is still playing? Well, you know what? I went on the uh, on the House floor uh, a number of months ago, and uh, and and I think the Lions were one and zero, and I called that this is going to be. I remember that actually. I remember that. I remember that. I believe in this team since since uh, since I was born. And uh, after I got off the floor, you wouldn't believe how many people from every corner of the nation already. Lions are 1-0. and yeah. And they're already saying, man, uh, great speech. Love the Lions. Great. And again, uh, this is something that America loves an underdog. America loves to watch someone scrap and sacrifice yeah. and then eventually get their due. Uh, the lawmakers, I, I think that... Uh, um, everything aside, I think they're kind of jealous, yeah. uh, uh, frankly, because Michigan's done so well, hey. and the Lions are doing so well, hey. and that's good because it's our turn now. We're going to get I it. Agree. Amen to that. Hey, John, let me ask you, too. What can sports we, – we talk about – I mean, we're all uh, around here, residents of the state of Michigan. You walk down Woodward. You walk downtown. You walk down at Seven Mile. Everybody's smiling. Yeah. The, yeah. What, what sports can do yeah, right. for a community, for a state, for a city, isn't it incredible? Like – it feels like January, you blink and it's over because yeah. of this Lions run. What, what is it about sports that you feel brings everybody together? Well, I, I think there are so few things in society right now, which is why uh, I, I feel like most people would say we're so divided. There, there's there's uh, so few things that we have in common. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have common sense because we don't have common experiences. Uh, we, we don't have uh, necessarily things that, that we all believe in. But sports teams tend to be an area where we drop our tribalism and then our next door neighbors are our friends. Uh, we may be black, we may be white, we may be Hispanic, but we're all Lions fans. And this is something we can all get behind. It's a time that um, we're living our normal lives. We're doing our hard things. But, I mean, the, the, the Flint uh, plant is shutting down for a shift so that. everybody can watch it. It's not just Republicans watching or Democrats. It's everybody looking at something that we can believe in. And so I think that people are really buying into something positive because we need America's team right now. We need America's team today, and the Lions are America's team, something we can all believe in. All right, so let's all say the Lions. We expect the Lions to win. What about the other side? Who do you think in the AFC? championship game expect is a strong word yeah well we expect them to win right yeah, we're not going in thinking they're losing kansas city baltimore do you have a preference do you care as long as the well, lions I, win look, i'll tell you what it, it's uh it, it's it's tough it's tough to bet against the hardballs right now. Who's having a better year than the hardballs? Right. Nobody. Nobody. I'll tell you what. By but, the way, are you interested in the Michigan head coaching job at all? Because you sound like oh, <laughs> yeah. he's he he going. Hey, I'll get you. these guys going. But, I, but, but you also, uh, I, I think my wife would put me out if I bet against the Kansas City Swifties. Right. Yeah. There so, you go. Um, Kansas I, it, City it, It's going to be tight. So uh, I, I think that I would take uh, the Ravens. Uh, probably uh, uh, probably six and a half. There you go. There it is. Raven, six and a half. You got a final score on the Lions? Um, I'd say uh, Lions um, 112, <laughs> uh, San Francisco zero. Now, where do you watch yeah, the me... game? I mean, you don't have to give your location away. I guess that's not right. a good question. No. But you're yeah. not going to the game, are you? Wants to watch the game with yeah. yeah, like we, for real. John James is invited to the watch party at hey, Woodward Sports. There you go. <laughs> You know, so th this is something that I'm sharing with my children. Yeah, uh, again, absolutely. Um, because I'm on the road so much, uh, my, my, my wife and kids have sacrificed uh, time that they're never going to get back. Uh, I, I don't have the time that I would like for my 10-year-old, my 8-year-old, my 5-year-old. They, they also don't have time with their dad. Right. So uh, we're gonna, we're, I'm probably going to uh, make a fire on the outside and, uh, and, and put the, bring the TV out there, let them play in the snow. Those kids will never forget in. it. 
and watch the I'll Lions never win. forget that. Yeah, they're That's spoiled amazing. now. They, they expect the Lions to win now. So. <laughs> look, just like him. John, he asked you the score. I'm going to ask you this. Who's the player that you think is going to have the game or that you need to have a game for the Lions? Who's that player? Man, um, I'll tell you what. Um, in seriousness, yes. if Jared Goff can continue to play mistake-free football, we win the game. Yep. 100%. Totally agree with you. You said it better. No doubt about it. Well, better. we cannot thank you enough for joining us this is great. Uh, here, sir. You have a seat tomorrow? anytime. <laughs> anytime. Free anytime tomorrow. you want to talk uh, ball, we're here, buddy. Heck Thanks yeah. so much. John thank James uh, represents Michigan's 10th Congressional District. He does so uh, very well over there in Washington. Thank you so much, John James, everybody. We are going to take a break when we come back.